Hello again folks, I am Blunty, this is the IMD EM1 and strapped to the front of it is the brand new Pro Series lens, the first of the Pro Series lenses from Olympus. This is a 12 to 40 mil constant aperture f2.8 zoom and uh, it is, like I said, the first of its kind from Olympus, the first of a whole new range of Pro Series lenses to go along with their new Pro level body. So in full frame terms, we're dealing with a field of view that's full frame equivalent to uh, 24 to 80 mil f2.8 all the way through the zoom range, which is absolutely fantastic. It makes it an incredibly useful walking around lens. In fact, for many people, this may be the lens that lives on the camera almost all of the time because it is just so flexible. And it has a couple of things that I absolutely love about it. Now, the first of those things, actually, give me a sec, I'll just put the uh, dust cap back on the uh, body here before people start freaking out, because <laughs> you know, people do when you leave it like that. Uh, now, the first thing I love about it is it's got the snap focus ring that first saw its appearance on Olympus's fantastic 12mm f2 prime, and that means you can just snap it back and it gets you manual focus, not, fly, not the sort of ever spinning fly-by-wire stuff but a proper manual focus that's got stops on either end it's still electronic of course so it's not quite as smooth as a true manual focus uh, lens but it is very very close and just is a wonderfully easy and intuitive way to snap right into manual focus without having to fiddle with any menus or anything and you can sort of pull focus and feel your stops and everything you've got brilliant control over it and it works a bloody treat uh, the general feel of it is really nice too. It's a very solidly built lens. It's got a really lovely tactile feel to it, really grippy, really just, it's a kind of a premium feeling lens, as it should be for a pro series lens. Of course, it's supposed to feel premium and chunky and, you know, built for a life of, of pro use, built to survive the rigors of a pro's camera. It's got the lens function button there as well, which Olympus shooters will know is a really handy thing to have. You can sort of program that to uh, assign that to uh, sort of various functions as you need them and want them. Um, and aside from that, it's got two other things that I really love about the hardware. Just before we get to the results of the thing, I want to show you two other things. The first of those two things is the lens hood. Now, it looks like any other lens hood, uh, and Olympus shooters will again be very very, very thankful to hear that finally this is the first i think the first olympus micro four thirds lens to actually come with the lens hood included as again as you would expect a pro lens to have it but the thing i really love about this is it's never ever ever going to come off your camera or come off your lens accidentally see these things here locking mechanisms you have to press those in and twist it to actually get the thing off and it, when you pop it on there it locks in place so it stays exactly where it should which means you can pull it in and out of your bag any bag you know no matter how tight and fiddly it is and and know that your lens hood is going to stay put you're never going to lose this thing and i love that but this is i think the first lens i've ever used where i've actually wanted the lens hood on there all the time and it hasn't been any kind of problem any kind of issue any kind of hassle at all now the second thing that i really love about this is the lens cap and uh, it may not look that spectacular. I mean, it's a lens cap, but it's designed to accommodate the lens hood being on there all the time because you've got the little pinchy bits here in the middle. And, you know, if you're a Canon shooter, maybe that's not so revolutionary, but most Olympus lenses have a lens cap like this, which have the little releases on the side, which means if you have a lens hood on your uh, lens, it makes it a real pain in the ass to get these lens caps off and on because they're just they're extra, extra fiddly, basically. They stay on your lens perfectly well. They do their job wonderfully well. It's not, you know, an inherently bad design. It's just a more awkward design. But now, serious lens cap. Big, chunky, thick, spring-loaded, pinchy bits in the middle. It goes on and off as easy as you like. And, you know, again, it seems like a little thing, but these little things all add up to a more premium feeling experience, a more carefully designed experience, a more professional experience, what you'd expect from a pro level lens. I keep saying it. And of course, as we saw in my previous video where I put the weather sealing of this and the Olympus EM1 to the test, it is a splash proof lens. Again, as you'd expect a pro lens to be. It just makes sense. All right, so enough of my prattle. Let's pop this back on the camera. We'll go out and we'll shoot with it and we'll come back and see how it performs. So, in my preview hands-on video I did of this lens, which was basically just me hands-on with a pre-release version for about an hour during a recent Photography Industry Expo, someone in the comments asked me why they would buy this lens instead of a pair of primes, which would work out to about the same cost. 
And this is what I told them. You want this lens for convenience, speed, coverage of every focal length between the extremes that the two primes won't cover. It's weather sealed. It's splash proof. It's dust proof. It's freeze proof. It comes with that hood and also a lens pouch, by the way. So there are indeed a few compelling reasons to justify this lens above a pair of Olympus's admittedly fantastic primes. I own the 12mm f2 and 45mm f1.8 lenses in my personal collection, and I love them. And even though this lens is slightly slower at f2.8, that's pretty much the only real compromise. Well, that and it's obviously larger and heavier due to the nature of it being a zoom. See, very often there are noticeable compromises to make for the convenience and flexibility of a zoom lens, and this is why primes continue to exist, and are indeed so popular with the most passionate of hobbyists and, of course, professionals. But there seems to be no real compromise on image quality, sharpness, focus accuracy, colour, contrast, control of chromatic aberrations and all that kind of stuff. Here, it's crisp, it's well controlled, and the bokeh is smooth and pleasant, and provides those lovely perfectly round bokeh balls from point light sources that we all love so much. And for video shooters, of course, as with all of Ollie's modern lens lineup, it's been designed to focus fast, smooth, and most importantly, silently. That manual focus snap ring works wonderfully well for video mode too, and again, it's not quite as nice as a true mechanical manual focus lens, but once you get a feel for it, it works certainly well enough to be very useful and a very practical option. This lens is, as far as my experience with it has gone, every bit the pro-level experience that you'd expect from, say, Canon's L-Series, which is their designation for pro-level glass. Everything from the general user feel and experience right to the end results are significantly above every other zoom I've used on the Micro Four Thirds system. Well, except for one, and that is, of course, Panasonic's own equivalent, the 12 to 35mm f2.8. And I'll get back to that comparison in a minute. But as far as this lens goes, I am very happy, and honestly, more than a little relieved that the first of Olympus's self-proclaimed professional level glass for this system does indeed live up to the label. There's honestly nothing I didn't like about using this lens, and I almost wish there was, so this review wasn't just full of me gushing on about it. But it's a fact, from stills to video, it's a superbly well-behaved tool. And a tool I'd gladly welcome into my kit bag any day, or indeed, any night. So there you go guys, that is the new Olympus 12-40mm f2.8 Pro lens, it is fantastic I think you'll agree. Now I didn't get a chance to shoot it directly up against Panasonic's equivalent lens which is a 12-35mm f2.8 but I have shot with Panasonic's lens a lot over the past sort of six weeks or so, I've just recently sent one back. Um, and I can tell you that this is at least as good, if not better, in every respect. Uh, things I liked more about this is the focusing is much faster, um, and the focusing distance can be much, much closer, as you've seen in those demo shots I've just shown you, the, uh, the macro ability, or faux macro ability, really. It's not a true macro lens, it's not one-to-one -one or anything, but it is fantastic for getting really close to your subjects at both ends of the zoom range, I've found, and uh, that, for me, puts it above Panasonic's uh, equivalent lens as far as the way I like to shoot goes. Um, Panasonic's lens does have built-in stabilization on it, so you still may want to prefer that one if you have one of their Lumix bodies which does not have the inbuilt stabilization that is so fantastic on Olympus's latest stuff, the five axis stuff. Mm -hmm. But all that said, you know, it's like I said, it's at least as good, if not better, than Panasonic's own lens, and it is just a fantastic lens in its own right. Um, which has made me a very, very happy man. All I've got to do now is figure out how to afford one. Um, or maybe I'll just really, really suck up to the people at Olympus and see if they've got one just hanging around spare somewhere <laughs> because I, I want this lens. I need this lens in my life, I think. It's uh, just an amazingly useful lens for the way I shoot. In the focal lengths I tend to prefer to shoot in uh, and the way I work and everything, it's, well, I'm not going to stop rambling. I love the lens. I think you're getting the point. I love this lens. I love it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful to you. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.